Delaney's is, is, is not a mug. In boxing, the heavyweight division was seen as the royal weight class from the beginning of time. Numerous great rivalries are a testament to that. Ali Frazier, Louis Marciano, Tyson Holyfield. On March 8th, we are about to see a no less intriguing clash between Francis Ngannou and Anthony Joshua. Not many people could imagine that a UFC fighter would be able to compete against the best heavyweights of the world. But the Predator proved that everything is possible. Take a seat, dear friends, and get ready for a countdown for the fight between Ngannou and Joshua. Please don't forget about the likes, comments with four words, and subscribe to the channel. Here we go! As always, let's rewind the clock a little bit and talk about how we got to this fight. First, we'll talk about Joshua and show our respect to an experienced representative of the royal sport. All of us know about the Brit's amazing amateur career. Olympic gold medal in London, world champion silver medal in Baku. This is just a fraction of Anthony's accomplishments in amateurs. In the quarterfinals, the Brit beat a current prospect from China, Zhele Zhang. On July 24th of 2013, Anthony signed the contract with a famous promoter, Eddie Hearn. For the first six fights, Joshua was knocking out no names, one after another. And he's gone. Out of there, I think Howard Foster's getting ready to step in here because nobody wants to see Butler get hurt. Body shots coming in, he's all over the place here. That's it. Some tricks for a rookie. What is keeping Leo up? He is getting tattooed here. In November of 2014, Anthony performed on his first pay-per-view card against Michael Scott. Thanks to his skills, the Brit finished the fight in the first round in a convincing fashion. Past his best now, right comes through and he's wobbled, he's shaken by that and Joshua straight on it and sprouts in big trouble here. Joshua just teeing off the right says that will do it right there. A great career start allowed him to face Kevin Johnson. As the fight began, Joshua did not wait for too long and knocked Johnson down for the second time in his career. Joshua going to work once again and nails it! Johnson got up and collapsed under the barrage of strikes for the second time in the last second of the first round. The referee let Kevin continue, but in vain, because a minute and a half later, Josh Lewis stopped this beating. After this amazing performance, Joshua took the number two spot in the WBC rankings. The fight between an undefeated Anthony Joshua and a former kickboxing champion of Europe, Dylan White, took place on December 12th of 2015 in London. It was a rematch because the athletes already faced each other on the amateur scene, and back then, Dylan took the victory. Proszę zobaczyć, co się dzieje. W tym momencie Jonathan Banks który rzucił się na Diliana White. I kolejne prawy to już są potężne. Oj, teraz wyrzucony prawy podbródkowy. A vicious knockout in the seventh round put this rivalry to the test. Dylan couldn't come back to his senses for a very long time after a devastating shot from Joshua. On April 9th of 2016 in London, Joshua faced an American IBF champion of the world, Charles Martin. Martin picked Joshua for his title defense, but as the fight showed, it was a big mistake. In the beginning of the second round, Joshua dropped the champion with a right cross. All right, look for the, the left. Got it! Right hand on the floor. Martin looks into his corner as if to say, what on earth was that? Martin got up on count nine. Joshua went for the finish and slayed the American with a barrage of punches. The ref stopped this outclass from the Brit and Joshua became the new IBF heavyweight champion of the world. I mean, Tyson Fury did a great job winning against Vladimir Klitschko. It was an absolutely awful fight. And I'm not sure how good the second one will be. But when you watch him fight, you get value for money. 
Anthony Joshua clashed with a former world champion Vladimir Klitschko on April 29th of 2017 at a Wembley Stadium in London. The IBF title was on the line, the fans' opinion split. Some thought that a young and hungry Joshua would simply run through the veteran, while others argued that it's too early to write off an experienced Ukrainian. To many people's surprise, the veteran showed a competitive fight. Vladimir was landing many punches, imposing his fighting rhythm, and even managed to knock the Brit down. But youth ultimately prevailed, and Anthony Joshua dispatched Vladimir Klitschko in 11th round. By the time of the stoppage, Joshua was ahead on two of the three judges' scorecards. After this fight, Vladimir Klitschko retired from the sport of boxing. The clash was recognized as the fight of the year by many credible media outlets. In September of 2018 in London, Anthony Joshua collided with a Russian boxing legend, Alexander Povetkin. The fight promised to be exciting as it was between two boxers with dynamite in their hands. The bout met all expectations. The fans witnessed an entertaining battle where Joshua knocked Povetkin out in the seventh round. He's always welcome, so I have no interest in who wins and I'm not really swaying to, to uh, uh, Wilder or Fury. I'm not fussed. Well, Presumably, Fury will have a rematch call, or Wilder will have a rematch call. So, obviously, being British, we'd like to see Tyson Fury win that fight. But in terms of April, Deontay Wilder must win that fight if that's going to happen. We're not willing to wait until December. On a left hook and a right hand, and down now, Joshua with a big left hand and AJ. The next opponent in the Brit's way was supposed to be Jarrell Miller, but after failing a doping test, Miller was stripped of his license. Anthony didn't want to withdraw from the fight and was ready to face anybody. Nobody wanted to take the fight against a dangerous Brit, except for Mexican Andy Ruiz. Nobody gave Ruiz a chance. However, the Mexican sensationally knocked Anthony down twice, after which the referee stopped the fight. The one who was knocking people out left and right got knocked out himself. This was the headline in the media after the fight. Never, I don't underestimate anyone. He's a decent, he's a decent puncher, a decent fighter. It's his chance, isn't it? And I always say, like anyone who comes to box me boxes 50, 20 percent better than what we've seen. Um, it's funny because as a fighter, as I said, I don't overlook anyone, but it's easy to overlook someone because of their shape or their record or whatnot. But these guys are. Uh, coming to win and uh, he's a better man tonight he done his job the rematch took place on december 7th of 2019 in saudi arabia the fight went the full distance of 12 rounds in the conclusion of which anthony joshua was announced as the winner retrieving his titles so it's a neutral ground neutral territory so if, the, if he's keen um alexander usik uh, ulev ruiz I don't want to mention the other guy's name, you know who they are, um, but when they're ready, you know, I fought a lot of great names on my record and I've beaten some good names as well and I'm looking forward to taking on more challenges and Andy's still on that list because I think we make for good music, he's a good dancing partner. The next challenge for the Brit was supposed to be Fury, but Tyson had to fill his contractual obligations and fight Deontay Wilder before September of 2021. In the end, Joshua's opponent turned out to be a renowned Ukrainian, Alexander Usyk. On June 25th, Hearn announced that this fight was going to take place on September 25th. Joshua couldn't keep up with a fast and technical opponent, which eventually led to him losing via unanimous decision. Joshua demanded a rematch. 
The rematch between Anthony Joshua and Alexander Usyk took place on August 20th of 2022 in Saudi Arabia. Titles of all organizations were on the line. The second fight was more competitive. Joshua landed more shots and took some rounds, but it wasn't enough. Alexander Usyk became the heavyweight champion of the world for a second time. After an upsetting second loss, Joshua broke down and cried, but everyone knew he would come back. After that, Anthony Joshua had his most recent fight on December 23rd of 2023 at a huge boxing show in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Joshua was dominating for all five rounds and during the break, the Swede refused to continue. Now let's talk about Francis Ngannou. This truly terrifying fighter began to train in martial arts at 22. Inspired by a famous boxer in Mike Tyson, at 26, Francis decided to flee his homeland in search for opportunities, and his sights fell on France. However, after arriving in Europe, he was put in jail for two months in Spain for an illegal border crossing. Eventually, Francis made it to France. There, he got to know one of his future coaches, Fernando Lopez. Being a fan of Mike Tyson, initially Ngannou wanted to learn boxing, but Lopez saw his potential in MMA and convinced him to try this sport. At UFC 218 on December 3rd of 2017, Ngannou faced number one ranked heavyweight Alistair Overeem. Overeem was famous for being a prominent striker and formidable knockout artist of the heavyweight division. However, in the first round, Ngannou landed a devastating left uppercut that knocked Overeem out cold. Even Francis himself was worried looking at how Overeem's head bounced off. After the fight, everybody wanted to see the Cameroonian dethrone the heavyweight king, Stipe Miocic. Now you will now be most likely receiving a shot at the heavyweight title. Give us your thoughts on a matchup between you and the heavyweight champion, Stipe Miocic. Yes, I'm ready for that. I'm ready than ever. I was. The fight between Ngannou and Miocic took place on January 20th of 2018. Many fighters and experts thought that Francis was going to get the upper hand in this bout thanks to a powerful punch. Both fighters gave interviews to the ESPN and had a stare down. I, I really believe that I'm the best. I'm the best technically, powerfully, all the plan, the motivation, everything, I have everything. I have everything to beat him on Saturday. To many people's surprise, an experienced Croatian found holes in Ngannou's technique. Miocic was wrestling a tough Cameroonian and dragged him to deep waters. In the end, after five rounds, all three judges scored this fight for Miocic. I think tonight I learned that uh, I never learned in this sport since four years. I, under I underestimate my opponent and I discover some new part of this sport and that I ignored about it. After his first loss, Francis Ngannou took a break for six months and then faced Derek Lewis in July of 2018 at UFC 226. Many thought that the fight was going to be absolutely spectacular due to a knockout power of both athletes. But things turned out differently. In three rounds, fighters landed 31 strikes combined, 11 of which came from Francis. The fight happened to be so boring that the fans were booing fighters while the referee was warning them for fighting too cautiously. After three rounds, Derek Lewis celebrated the victory. The American broadcaster Joe Rogan labeled this bout as the worst heavyweight fight in the division's history. The career of Francis hit the rough path. A loss to Stipe and a snooze fest with Derek severely damaged the reputation of the knockout artist. However, he managed to get himself together, returned to the octagon, and knocked Curtis Blades out for the second time. The fans were happy to see old Francis and anticipated his next fight. First of all, my friend, tell me how good it feels to be back in the win column. Oh, I feel really good, man. Oh, you know, I just stumbled from the, the bottom of the water like, yes, you've been a hard time, but listen, man, I'm back. And you're carefree and you're back in a big way and you just knocked out the man who most believe is the greatest heavyweight in mixed martial arts history. What does that mean to you? Uh, you know, I've been waiting for this fight since two years ago because uh, I know that I have to uh, challenge uh, to face the adversity of, uh, of a fighter like uh, Ken, you know, to prove myself and then I'm very uh, thankful that he accepted the fight. I'm honored to be here, you know, and happy also to have, to have the win. 
In June of 2019, Ngannou faced Junior Dos Santos. The Brazilian was famous for his amazing boxing and the fans split in two camps. What's going to prevail, the power of Francis or skills and experience of Dos Santos? To many people's surprise, the fight ended in the first round. A vicious left hook to the chin dropped an experienced Brazilian and earned Francis a win over another former heavyweight champion. How much confidence does this win give you moving forward over a guy who many believe was the best boxer in UFC heavyweight history? You know, I mean, uh, of course, it gave, it gave me some confidence, but before that, I was already confident because Junior is a striker, he's a boxer, and I, uh, I believe that I'm the best boxer in the city. In May of 2020, at UFC 249 with Ferguson and Gaethje headlining the event, Ngannou clashed with Rosenstrike. A couple of months prior, he called out Francis, blaming Ngannou for his underestimation towards him. However, he didn't realize what he signed up for. Francis almost ripped Rosenstrike's head off in 20 seconds. After the fight, the commentator Joe Rogan called Ngannou the scariest fighter in UFC history. At the end of the card, the Cameroonian took the performance of the night bonus. On March 27, 2021, at UFC 260, Ngannou had a rematch with Stipe Miocic for the heavyweight championship. I remember that fight from, um, from the preparation and um, obviously I'm not taking credit of Stipe. He was a better fighter that night. Um, but when I look at that fight, I hate to watch that fight because I don't recognize myself. Even the way that I'm fighting, the way that I'm rushing, it doesn't, that guy looked like me, but I don't recognize that style. Um, and also, I have a lot of, I did a lot of mistakes uh, leading up to that fight. I wasn't even there myself, you know, I kind of like, um, I didn't even have the emotion of in that fight. I don't know, I was just there like, lack of emotion but uh, this time things will be different the fight began stipe was sticking to the game plan of the first fight and tried to score a takedown but unsuccessfully the cameroonian stuffed it it was clear that he made adjustments after the first bout in the second round Ngannou landed a left hook to the champion's chin stipe tried to return the favor but it was a fatal mistake the Cameroonian knocked the Croatian out with a check hook and landed a terrifying hammer fist to a lane opponent. What a scary performance from Ngannou! After the fight, Miocic was taken to the hospital. Thus, Francis Ngannou won the rematch and became the UFC heavyweight champion. I feel great, man. You know, it's been three years that I've been living uh, with, uh, without it. I, thought, uh, I always thought that I could have have it three years ago, so um, tonight there wasn't a, a place for mistake. So, On January 23rd of 2022, at UFC 270, Ngannou had a unification title bout against an interim champion in Cyril Gan. The fight went the full distance and ended with a unanimous decision victory for Francis Ngannou. After that, Ngannou's contract expired and he had long negotiations with the UFC in regards to his salary and opportunity to box. The agreement was not met, which made Ngannou a free agent and he was stripped of the title. According to Dana White, Ngannou was offered the biggest paycheck in the history of the UFC heavyweight division. On May 16th of 2023, it was announced that a 36-year-old fighter signed a contract with PFL. Initially, Francis' dream was to become a boxing world champion, as he got motivated to go into the fighting sport by Mike Tyson. But because of his coach, Fernando Lopez, he put his dream on the shelf and eventually became the UFC heavyweight champion. But dreams are meant to be fulfilled, right? After Francis Ngannou left the UFC, he began to look for a fight in boxing. The best and biggest option for him was Tyson Fury. Despite long negotiations, Ngannou ultimately managed to get the fight against Gypsy King. The match between Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou was officially announced for the 28th of October in Riyadh. It was supposed to be a 10-round fight. The Brits team stated that there would be no titles on the line. Francis hired a coach in the face of former undisputed heavyweight world champion Mike Tyson. Let me tell you, my brother, the world is going to see what's going to happen to your man. Your man will get his head boxed off and stopped at will, my pal. Don't you worry about that. And if I'm wrong, me and you will fight straight after. Yeah! Yeah, man! <laughs> yeah! Win, win, 
I'm gonna knock that big stiff spark out. Go on, my son. I reverse the table to you on the sixth round. Okay? I'm ready and I'm knocking you out. I'm cold. ready. I'm ready too. Out cold. I'm more than ready. So, both fighters talked a lot of crap. It was time to back it up in the ring. In the first round, the Gypsy King worked with a jab, pulling his opponent in close range. Ngannou was charged for a knockout and put power in singular shots. In the second round, Fury began switching stances and attacked with a lead hand, but... Oh, he catches him off guard! Francis the Brits promoter, Eddie Hearn, announced that Anthony Joshua and Francis Ngannou signed the contract to fight each other. Initially, the fight was targeted for March 9th. However, the hosts of the tournament in Saudi Arabia rescheduled the night of boxing for March 8th, not to overlap with the UFC 299 event. I've never known anybody to walk into a sport and compete, and in my opinion, and it was very close, in my opinion, beat Tyson Fury that night. Oh, there's something more on the line, which is probably the undisputed, so... so. Let's see, maybe I will do something that nobody has done before and I really believe that I have the tools of doing that. As you can see, fighters are actively preparing for the fight. We hope to see that bout. The boxers already had a stare down. What do you guys think? Can Nganu make another sensation or will an experienced Joshua find holes in Nganu's technique? Leave your opinion in the comments below and now we just have to wait for March 8th. See you soon.